This week on Maker Update, a pint-sized flight sim, the PleasureBot 9000, a Fallout guitar, a crawling ball bot, an RFID Spotify player, bending plastic, and hands-free handles. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing all right, staying cool. It feels like summer's already here. I'm already sweating out here in the studio. But because I'm crazy, I'm spending all my time right now thinking about what Halloween projects I can get a start on to make this year's Halloween extra awesome. I have some ideas, but I also have some projects to share, so let's get started with the project of the week. Adrian from Gathno Brain went to incredible lengths to turn this 80s Top Gun era cockpit toy into an air combat simulator. Using a Raspberry Pi, a 4-inch screen, an arcade style joystick, and a handful of buttons and LEDs, he was able to retrofit the enclosure with the essential ingredients for a desktop main cabinet. For the software, he's using a retro gaming Pi OS called Recall Box. I feel like RetroPie gets most of the attention on this show, but Recall Box looks like a great new option that, from what I've read, is a little more beginner friendly. For Adrian's build, he's configured it to play nothing but air combat games. But what really puts this project over the top is that Adrian repurposed and integrated most of the original switches, lights, and electronics from the toy. He desoldered and cleaned up the two PCBs that handled the original interactions and work them into the rest of the system so that everything's running off the same 5 volt input. Also, I noticed that to help fit the Pi and screen into this small toy enclosure, Adrian used a flat ribbon HDMI cable. You can get these in straight or right angle combinations. If you need to cover a short distance with the lowest possible profile, this seems like a good way to do it. You can learn more about Adrian's Pi Commander project at gaffnobrain.net. Now for more projects, the PleasureBot 9000 sounds like a Barbarellian sci-fi perversion, but is actually a delightful automatic head scratcher by Ian Charnas. It's essentially a scalp massager connected up to a reciprocating motor that gently lowers and lifts the massager onto your head. Just like a back scratcher, there's something about it that feels better when someone else does it for you, even if that someone else is a robot. So the PleasureBot is here to serve you. To build one for yourself, you can probably just look up reciprocating linear motor designs on Thingiverse and take it from there, but Ian is also selling these directly with the proceeds going to provide PPE for healthcare workers. You can find out more at iancharnas.com. Tim Sway made this incredible Fallout-inspired electric guitar. In his latest video, he skips past the underlying guitar build and cuts right to all the unique accents and elements he created to give the right post-apocalyptic personality. From the salvage circuit board panels to the bottle cap volume knobs, the blinking LEDs, the rusted metal grill pit guard, there's a lot of ideas here that you can take and apply to your own projects. On Instructables, I found this crazy robot design by Gregory Levesque. It's based on an Arduino Nano and uses a servo driver board connected up to 10 servos along with some LEDs and an ultrasonic sensor for obstacle detection. But what makes this robot so special is the ingenious way it has these doors that open up so that the legs can fold out and then retract back together when it's done. The enclosure is all 3D printed and includes custom brackets that perfectly fit all the components. It's a very cool design and gets bonus points for being kind of cute. Also on Instructables, Mark Hank one shows how he was able to make this RFID reader for his stereo so that he could trigger albums to play just by placing the album art near his speaker. He calls it a vinyl simulator because it's meant to play full albums and requires some attention and contact with the album art similar to how you'd interact with records. He's using a Raspberry Pi to act as a middleman between the RFID reader, Spotify, and his multi-room Sonos music system. If it's something you'd like to try, the guide really covers every little detail from the basics of setting up a Raspberry Pi to writing Spotify data to your RFID tags. Now for some tips and tools. On the Make Something channel, David Picciuto demonstrates four ways to bend plastic. The coolest one, I think, is this straightened out electric stove coil placed inside some steel tubing, allowing you to heat up a joint in the material right where you want it. John Upsell published a series of four 3D printed designs on Instructables for hands-free adapters for common household fixtures. A foot operated toilet flusher, a forearm operated deadbolt twister, a forearm door pull, and a foot operated round doorknob twister, which I think is probably the toughest challenge to solve. Scott McIndoe shows how he saved and converted laundry detergent bottles into a hardware organizer for his garage. This is a neat trick that I've also seen Tom Sachs do, but he cuts his bottles a little higher to keep the handles on. 
What Scott did that I think is smart is to actually tape or glue an example of the item under the description. On the Cool Tools channel, I've got a talk with Jordan Bunger about the Wow Stick Electric Precision Screwdriver. I actually picked this one up after I talked with him, and now it's one of my most used tools, especially with all the small screws I'm using on the cocktail robot. It's also able to use all of the four millimeter bits from the iFixit kits that I have. If you work with small screws and standoffs for electronics, for around $50, this will save you some time and also save you some strain on your hands from twisting on those skinny precision drivers. Check it out. Through the Adafruit blog, I learned about careeditor.com. If you have one of these common 16 by two LCDs, this online editor allows you to create custom characters and animations. You draw on what you want and it spits out the Arduino code. You can scroll characters across the screen or animate them within each block. Having it be this easy makes me want to play with LCD animations just for fun. Finally, if you missed last Saturday's Virtually Maker Fair, you can catch up with a lot of the content on the Make YouTube channel. I might be biased, but one of my favorite segments was Sophie Wong's workshop tour. There's a lot of great organization ideas here that you can steal, including the soldering station IKEA cart. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their latest video on how MOSFET transistors work. I can still use a MOSFETs for dummies video, but this is a great short technical and straightforward explanation. I just have a blind spot on transistors that I hope to overcome. I feel like the more things like this that I watch, the better chance I have. If you're in a similar situation, go check it out. All right, that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Maybe let me know what your favorite aerial combat video game is. If I had to pick one, I would pick the original Star Wars arcade game where you sit down in the cockpit. I know it's more like space combat than aerial combat, but that's, that's my pick. You gotta deal with it. Big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.